So, Kenny. Yeah. Who's your person? Well, I just noticed that there's certain people here that might not know the name I'm going to mention. So, it's a guy by the name of Alan Freed. For the people who don't know, Alan Freed was a disc jockey that came to New York in 1954. I mean, some of the historical information is uh, that he started off in Cleveland and then there was a failing uh, station in New York. You mean uh, WJW in Cleveland? <laughs> yeah. And then would it be 1010 wins that he came exactly. to? Exactly. He was discovered, I believe, by promotion men in New York. And so promotion men would go to Philadelphia, they would go to Detroit, and they went to Cleveland. And when they went to Cleveland, they said, hey, there's a guy in Cleveland that's different from all of the other people. And that's, I guess, they either let WINS know or WINS heard it through, through these people, and they brought, wound up bringing uh, him to New York. In 1954, it was a 50,000 watt station, and they gave him the seven to 10 slot all week and also a show on Saturday, and uh, there were hundreds of thousands of people tuned into him. And what he was doing was he was playing rhythm and blues. He wouldn't ever play any cover records, so he always played the authentic record, like, for example, uh, Sincerely by the Moonglows. And the McGuire sisters had a big pop record out of that, but he wouldn't play it. And as a kid, I must have been 13 years old, and uh, we started listening to this music. We had never heard this music, and he, he created a revolution. He would sit there, and you felt that he was so engaged in the records that he would be playing, and he'd be beating on a telephone book. And he would also uh, give uh, dedications. So people felt, we all felt that we were part of this. And this was sort of like a secret. It was like, became a secret society that young kids had. And adults had their own world. And this was ours. So this is, this is, is it fair to say, do you think that in, in 1954, it's the invention of teenagers? That before that, before the war, pop music, the same pop song was for the whole family. Exactly. But with Alan Freed and, and rock and roll, this is music just for young people. Exactly. And, and uh, he uh, is credited in many circles as coining the term rock and roll. Right. And basically, he started the, the birth of rock and roll as we wound up knowing it. And I remember, you know, hearing those records... Today, those records are the foundation of everything that came after it. Uh, Alan Freed's uh, life was not untroubled. Well, you know, uh, you discover that from looking on the internet, but, uh, you know, as a kid... <laughs> hey! Uh, as a kid... I'm very youthful looking, Kenny, but... No, but as a kid, you don't know. You, you, you don't know any of the backstory to any of it. I actually met Alan Freed one time. What were you, with which group? With the Harbolites. In those days, you know, you would, uh, you would lip sync the record that you made. So we, we came out and they played the record and we, we lip synced it. And um, did he treat you nicely? Well, you know, I was maybe six, I was 16 years old. So, you know, he was a man. In those days, there was a tremendous separation between people that were teenagers and people that were adults. That doesn't seem to exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> One of the greatest experiences that I ever had was American Hot Wax, where I got to recreate the Alan Freed show. So I was in that, at that show, you know, when I was a kid, and uh, I got a chance in 1978 to uh, be the music director of that movie and recreate the show. So it was, it was quite incredible. And we had Chuck Berry, 
we had Jerry Lee Lewis, we had Screamin' Jay Hawkins, we had Frankie Ford, and that's where they came. I was in the truck. There was in those days you had to record on tape, and so it was a 24 track tape in the truck. And they came in. They said, "Oh, we need a group to do something." So I said, "Well, yeah, I used to sing, and <laughs> I, I, I was in a group." And I called some friends of mine, Bruce Sedano, Eddie Hokinson, and Joe Esposito, and we formed the Planetones. And that's where the Planetones were born for that movie. Oh, I get it. Because you American needed some tracks Hot for Wax. the movie? Yeah. And so you just called some friends and now you're a group. Right. Man, your friends are a lot better than my friends. Well, these guys are awesome. Uh, they are. Yeah. Alan Freed, uh, dead at 43. Crazy. Yeah. You know, it's tough to come all the way down and be banished from, you know, his yeah. world. 